Let me explain something that many of you don't understand. And, and even I found that those who are in deliverance also don't understand this. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time deal. Can we look at this? Let me teach you this. I'll do it quickly. Can you find for me a seed shall shoot out of Jesse? Yeah, and then also find me uh, Revelation. Uh, he had seven eyes, seven horns, which are the seven spirits of the Lord sent into all the earth. Okay. Let me explain to you something. This will help you. Remember, the Lord Jesus is described with, one, with a certain specific word in the Gospels. He walked with the Spirit without what? Measure. He walked with the Spirit without what? Measure. He had the Spirit without measure. Meaning he had the fullness of God in bodily form. The problem is many of you don't study. And because you don't study, you don't understand what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, it means to have the Spirit without measure. What does it mean to have the Spirit without measure? If you cannot measure it, it is eternal. Come on. Are you understanding? Yes. Now, now, now watch this. When Jesus was with his disciples, before he ascended, three times did the apostles receive the Holy Spirit. The reason why you celebrate the day of Pentecost, you don't even understand that the Bible tells you something in the book of Acts. I will open this one. <laughs> Let me help you. Let me help you with this. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom. Okay. This one is interesting. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Actually, somebody find, uh, uh, who else has a mic? You have a mic? Acts chapter 2. Now, before you read Acts chapter 2, I want you to notice this. Jesus is with his disciples. Before he ascends, he blows on them. He says, receive ye the Holy Spirit. And he blew on them. That was their first infilling. Jesus, our Lord, blew on them and says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Then he told them, Go into Jerusalem and tarry until the Holy Ghost comes upon you, not comes in you. The first infilling of the Holy Spirit makes you to know who Jesus is. No man calls Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You cannot declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior unless the Holy Spirit drew you to himself. Come on. So the first infilling opens your eyes to see who Jesus is. Amen. This is what is called the Spirit of the Lord. Mm. That's good. Because you notice after the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas was still doubting. He saw Jesus until he touched him. But when Jesus blew on them, the men who could not pray all of a sudden became prayer warriors. Yes. Wow. They gathered together to seek his face. Yes. Something had changed in them. Mm -hmm. Jesus. The Jesus who was with them, when you tell them, pray with me, they could not. Mm. Mm. Said, don't be afraid. I will not leave you alone. I will leave you another comforter. He blows on them. 
all of a sudden they could gather together with one mind, with one accord and begin to pray. The second in feeling, read it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Wait, why is the day of Pentecost fully coming? Mm. How can you say the day fully came? There was another dose of the Holy Spirit they received. Mm. Read. They were all with one accord in one place. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven mm -hmm. as of a rushing mighty wind. Mm -hmm. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh -huh. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. Uh -huh. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Notice, it says they were all filled. Now, let me ask you a question so you understand, right? If I take this little, can you give me, uh, give me a smaller glass than this? Give me a glass that is visible and bring me water, yes? Smaller. Smaller. Uh -huh. Even smaller. Do we have something smaller than that? Okay. No, I, that, that is transparent. I want to show you this. I want you to see this and understand something. Amen. <laughs> Don't fill it with water. Give me something that I can fill water in these things in. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Now, I think the cameras, can we bring the cameras close? Because uh, I want them to see this and understand something. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Don't worry, we're about to finish, but I want you to understand something, and then I will read it for you and show you what it looks like to be filled with God. Amen. Do I have something I can fill this with water? Muscle man, thank you. God bless you. So this is the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying this water is the Holy Spirit, but understand. Okay? This is the Holy Spirit. These are two people. These are two people. When the Holy Spirit comes, are we zoomed in where people can see? When the Holy Spirit comes, he pours into this man. The same amount he pours into this man. This man will say, I am filled with the Holy Spirit, not because that's all the Holy Spirit can put in him. His capacity to be filled is small. Because there is another person here whose room is much more available. So what God poured into this one is not enough for this one. So this one can receive more. Now, you who is physical, now you can take this away. Let me show you now. You who cannot see in the spirit, both of them will stand and let's assume, let's just say, this one is bishop so and so. This is evangelist so and so. Both of them can stand and say, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. But what is the measure that we are measuring the being filled? Revelation 5, is it 5? Revelation 5, read it for me. Hear this. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Uh -huh. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne... Can we have him in the speaker so others can hear? Uh-huh, go. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Uh -huh. And I beheld, and lo... In the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, mm -hmm. having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Notice that. I don't think you heard that. He saw a lamb and we know who this lamb is. It's the Lord Jesus. He had seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent into the whole earth.
sent into what? The whole earth. Isaiah 11. Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1. Mm -hmm. A little louder. Mm -hmm. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, mm -hmm. and a branch shall grow out of his roots, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Notice now. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Number one. When you become a child of God, the first dose of the Holy Spirit that enters you is called the Spirit of the Lord. And it is by that Spirit you recognize Jesus as Lord. Amen. Because you cannot know Jesus to be Lord unless it is by divine revelation. Without divine revelation, you cannot identify who Jesus is. When you see a man saying, I used to be a Christian... And I, became, and I became somebody else. I became a Hindu. I became a Muslim. I became this. You know, they were a fake Christian. They never met Jesus. They don't even know him. Because you cannot have the spirit of the Lord and deny Jesus. If you are able to deny Jesus, you have the spirit of the world, the spirit of the Antichrist. That is why the Bible says, we have not received the spirit of this world, this is in 1 Corinthians 2. We have not received the spirit of this world, but we have received the spirit which is of God. Anyone that denies Jesus, anyone that denies Jesus and says they used to be a Christian, I used to be a pastor, so I became the, you know, this pastor was a pastor by the flesh. They went to school. They studied, came back, and became a pastor. Zero Holy Spirit. I used to be a Christian. I used to read the Bible all the time. That's why you find when I was talking to the young man and I was telling him, you're not ready for me to pray for you. He said, I read my Bible every day. It means nothing. Do you believe Jesus to be the only way? Do you believe the Lord Jesus is Lord? Or do you believe in many other ways? If you believe in any other way except Jesus, you don't have the Spirit of the Lord. Because the Spirit of the Lord will convict you. It will tie you up to know that, listen, indeed, Jesus is God. The reason why Peter could deny Jesus was because Peter did not have the Spirit of the Lord at the time that he confessed. He, Jesus asked them, who do the people say I am? He said, uh, others say you are this, others say you are Elias, some say this. He said, who do you guys say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Listen to what the Lord said. Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my father, not my spirit, not the Holy Spirit, my father. If it was the Holy Spirit, Peter would have never denied him three times. He could deny the Lord because the Lord was not in him. He loved Jesus by the flesh, but not by the spirit because he cared to save his life. When you have the spirit of the Lord, you are looking forward to death so that you can see him face to face. You will not be afraid for your life. To live is Christ. To die becomes gain. So notice it is describing the earthly life of our Lord Jesus. It says that, the spirit of the Lord shall be what? In him. Uh -huh, keep going. That is one. Somebody say one. one. Hold one finger up. Uh -huh. Keep going. And the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. So we have three. Uh -huh. The spirit of counsel and might. Spirit of counsel, might. Five. What is counsel? The ability to communicate. There are pastors and brothers and sisters in Christ that can't even get along. You're arguing with everybody. You fight with everybody. You don't have the spirit of counsel. Because if you have the spirit of counsel, I may not agree with you, but we'll still be fine. Daniel lived among pagans. Moses lived among pagans. They didn't need to fight with them and prove their point because they are the spirit of counsel.
Might is the spirit of power, the ability to manifest the power of God through healing, through deliverance. So we have five, keep going. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. How many are those? Seven. If you don't have these seven, you're not filled. Don't say, I am filled. And when you say, I am filled, say it according to your measure. Don't make yourself the standard because you don't have it. And it is possible for somebody to have all the seven. Let me show you something. I want to show you this. This one will be good. I want to prove to you scripture. You know, when I say things, people take my words out of a... I, I, want, I want you to see it for yourself. This is Daniel, and I want us to go to, uh, I, be, I know it's in Daniel chapter 2, I believe, uh, when Daniel was thanking God for what God showed him, uh, the, the king's dream. I want to show you that, it just came to me. Um, okay, 17, I believe. Uh huh. Okay, from verse 17. Okay. Hear this. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 17. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel went to his house and made known the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, mm -hmm. his companions, mm -hmm. that they would decree, desire the mercies of God of heaven concerning the secret, mm -hmm. that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then was the secret revealed unto him in a night vision. Mm -hmm. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed now, be... Now listen to now Daniel's prayer. Are you ready? Yes. Listen to Daniel's prayer. Uh -huh. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Uh -huh. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth, removeth kings and setteth up kings. Uh -huh. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Mm -hmm. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Mm -hmm. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. So Daniel is telling you, I am Daniel because I operated in this dimension of the Holy Spirit, the realm of wisdom and might. So out of the seven... Daniel functioned with two. I, 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 th I thought I was... He's telling you. So when you read that, you're not understanding what the, why Daniel is say, thanking God for that. Those, that was his portion because one thing that made Daniel stand out is the wisdom that they had. Because when you have wisdom, you are also able to interpret dreams. The power they had is that you throw them in the fire, they don't die. You put them in the lions, then the lions cannot eat them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So they had power backing them, but they also operated in wisdom. That's why you find Daniel being a prophet. He's still crying to God saying, Father, forgive us for disobeying our father, prophet Jeremiah. Whom you revealed these things to, we are very stiff neck. Notice he understood the ranking of Jeremiah. If you want to know the ranking of a Christian, you need to understand what of the Spirit of God does he operate in. You see, the Lord Jesus made one very easy for every Christian to receive. Mark 16, 17. Can you read it for me? We'll finish with this and we'll do our last prayer. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. 
And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Shh. The first thing that manifests after you have received the Spirit of the Lord is power over devils. That doesn't mean you're great. Because what makes a man great is the spirit of wisdom. That's why the Bible treasures wisdom, understanding, knowledge in that way. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. If these three are in perspective, if these three are received, because if you have wisdom, it means you know how to. Understanding is you understand why you're doing it. Knowledge is you can teach it to another person. That man is a very dangerous man because they can repeat their success over and over and over again because they understand it, they know how to do it, and they can pass it on. Uh, I thought I was teaching people. Is this making sense? That is what makes a man of God dangerous. Then if God gives you power or God adds power on that, now you are becoming very different. You are becoming Moses now. Moses was very full of wisdom, full of understanding. He had the fear of the Lord. He had power. He had counsel. <laughs> Moses operated in all seven. Amen. That is why he prophesied. He said, and the Lord shall give you another prophet likened unto me. He said, the one that is coming will be like me. And this was talking about Jesus' ministry on earth. Because the Lord Jesus operated as a prophet. Even though he was the Messiah. Even though he is God in the flesh. He operated as a prophet. And the foreshadow of the Lord was Moses. That is why Moses will come from the mountain. He's shining. They have to cover him. Jesus is praying. His body is transfigured. His clothes are transfigured. His, the similarities are too much. That is how you know who is a... Don't call somebody general because they are old. You can be a, an old man and you are full. You can be an old woman and you are full. Somebody is not a general because of age. If we look at the 24 elders in heaven, they are not elders because they are old. Spirits don't age. These are spirit beings. They are not the 12 disciples and the 12, uh, they are not the 12 apostles and the 12 tribes, no. Because the 24 elders existed way before. If you know your Bible, you know what I'm telling you. They are not elders because they are old. They are elders because they are seasoned. They are custodians of secrets that God has that even angels don't know. John says, a mighty angel cried out of heaven and said, who is worthy to open the scroll and to look into it? The Bible says, they looked in heaven, they looked on the earth, and they looked under the earth. There was no one to open the scroll or to read it. There was no one. But when they looked at the throne, they only saw a man sitting on the throne with a, with a scroll with seven seals. Now, do you understand what the seven seals are? You didn't get it. If you don't have the full spirit of God, you, cannot, you do not have access to the secrets of God. You don't. So, while they are observing this and John began to cry, John began to cry, saying, then who is worthy? Who will open this? One of the elders came from his high place and came to him and said, relax, one has been found. Even the root of Jesse. 
and he was shown on the throne. And when now they looked on the throne, they saw what? A lamb. As if it was slain, full of horns and eyes. And he was worthy to open it. Notice, they were looking for somebody in heaven and they couldn't see him. Yet the person they need is already in heaven. He's already sitting on the same throne that when they looked at at first, they saw God, but they did not see Jesus. But when the elder came and spoke to them, their eyes were open. All of a sudden, they saw a lamb sitting on that same throne. The whole time the lamb was there, they could not see. You can never know who Jesus is unless you have the fullness of the Spirit of God. You will never know Jesus. So the whole time the lamb is on the throne. But when they look, they just saw God. It is easy to see God. It is very difficult to see Jesus. That is why it is very easy for the whole world to say, I believe in God. Very difficult to say, I believe in Jesus. Because you can only believe on the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Not because somebody scared you into heaven. You will go to hell, you will suffer a torment. That person will confess Jesus in the flesh, but not in the spirit. Heaven is for those who love Jesus. Heaven is not for people who are afraid of fires. Because even in heaven there is fire that is worse than the one in hell. It's a purifying fire. God is a consuming fire. You are better off in hell than before that consuming fire. I thought I was speaking to somebody. Do you know why? Do you know why Satan cannot go back to heaven? You read the scripture wrong. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, put your treasures in heaven where no thieves, no rust can enter. He did not say they cannot enter because it is guarded. Actually, when you go to heaven, you will be surprised that there's no closed gate. Every gate is open. You can go anywhere. The gates are not to keep people out. They are checkpoints to know where you're going. It's like an exit. You are exiting this road because this road leads here. That's what the gates are for. The angels are attendants. They are not there to keep anyone out. No, 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 no. People who think that they have never been there. And the gates are not like gates like our gates. The word gate is what the people in that time could describe it. It's actually a ray of light. It, it literally shines like a diamond. It's very strange. You have to see it with your own eyes. I promise you, you have to, the day you make it to heaven, you will know what I'm telling you. You will remember, ah, Prophet Law told us, this is what it really is. You have to remember, these descriptions are according to the people in their time. Yes. There is no gate closed in heaven. And they, it's not like that. The devil, the Bible says there was war in heaven. And the devil fought. And Michael fought. And the devil fought to keep his place. The Bible literally tells you. He fought because there was no more place for him. People think he fought for a revolution. Are you listening to me? Yes. They fought because the atmosphere could not allow them to stay. If you enter heaven wrong, you will die right there. You will perish. It's a pure atmosphere. Nothing with blemish can come in. Now let me correct an error that a lot of people have. Let me correct an error that a lot of people have. You'll be surprised. This will shock you. This will surprise you. Hold on. Mm. 
Oh, Jesus. I want to show you something that will surprise you. Let me, let me find this for you. I want to, sorry, forgive me. This is not live stream. I'm just trying to help. Like it's not uh, revealed. Sorry. Uh, uh, I want to show you something. <laughs> I want to find this. It's a, it's a beautiful verse. Uh, I, want to, I want to show you this. This will change your mind completely. You will understand what Joel was saying. Can you go to Joel? In the last days I'll pour out my spirit. Mm. Mm. You have to turn on the sound. We can't hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Joel 2, 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It means there were only a few people that had the spirit, not everyone. So when people read this, they think it means that in the last days, before the Holy Spirit came, people had no Holy Spirit. I've heard pastors say nobody could be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. That's a lie. The difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is in the Old Testament, there were vessels that were prepared to carry him. Not everyone could carry him. You had to be selected by God before you came into this world. But in the New Covenant, he has poured his spirit upon all flesh. Let me give you an example. If you go to Samson, this is in Kings. No, Judges. What did the angel of the Lord tell his mother? Don't drink any wine. Don't do this. Because the child that you carry is full of the Holy Spirit in the womb. John the Baptist. Gabriel told his mother, told uh, uh, Zachariah. Make sure your wife does not do this and this because the child she's carrying is full of the Holy Spirit. Notice Samson is coming. He already has a covenant with God before he even does any covenant. There are human beings that come on earth that are covenant children. One day we'll talk about it. There are people who come and then they receive the Lord. And then there are people who are just born with the knowledge of God. They already know Jesus. You don't know how they know Jesus and they grow up in that manner. It's in your scriptures. So if anybody tells you, well, no one in the Old Testament was filled with the Holy Spirit, that's a lie. It's not even, it's in your Bible. It's there. Why is David saying, do not take your spirit from me? Psalms 53, I believe. Said, create in me a new heart and create in me a right spirit. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He already had it. When God chose Saul to be king, Saul also had the Holy Spirit. When he sinned against God what, did God, what does the Bible say? The spirit of the Lord departed from him and an evil spirit came to torment him. It's in your, but it was for select people. Psalms 51. It was for select people. But in the last days, God made it available for what? Everybody. Enoch disappeared because he passed all the levels.
If you want to know how Uncle Enoch disappeared, that's how he did it. Everyone that crossed this level could not stay on earth. Moses, go to the mountain and die. Moses started operating like a god on earth. Literally. If you are with Moses, you never had to buy shoes or clothes. You add 20 pounds, the clothes will grow. You lose 50 pounds, the clothes will shrink. Your shoes would never run out. Imagine God asking you permission to die. He's telling you, Moses, I want you to go on the mountain or Mount Nebo and do what? I want you to die. What? Give up your ghost. Give up your spirit. There's a level you get to that life that is eternal. It's so manifested here. That you have already entered eternity yet you are with men. God is like, no, you're going to mess up things. You need to go. That is why the two witnesses will be killed and they will come back to life and you will see them. Let me stop. I'm saying too much.